Hello and thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel, Pickleball Pick Apart. My name is Rory. I take pickleball games off of YouTube and I pick apart the play on the court. Watching my videos will help make you a better pickleball player. In this video, a women's doubles match played in a tournament at the 4.0 level. The game is played to 15 and one team gets out to a huge lead. Can the other team make their way back? And if they do, how do they do it? Is it because they changed strategy and started playing better? Or did the other team just let the game slip away? What about you? If you get way behind in a game, what do you do? What about if you're way ahead and you're about to close out the game? What do you do to make sure you end it? Let me know by leaving a comment in the comment section below. Thanks to the YouTube channel Ashley McCloskey for posting this video. Let's go. Here's the first serve. Good job with the fifth set reset, allowing her to move forward. A little firefight here. That was good defense. Good defense again. And a drive that got the job done. Really good all around point. And got stuck in the transition zone, hit a third shot drive but missed the fifth shot reset attempt. Maybe she should have let that ball pounce. Okay, as you can see what she's doing there with the return of serve, she's hitting it very deep, which allows her to move forward. Let's go back and take a look. Watch how lofted this return is, giving her ample time to move forward and get established. And she misses the backhand there. That's a very, very good deep return. Can she recover from being stuck at the back of the court? No, they cannot. That's a very good shot right there. Hit it down the line and the player in the near court could not get to it. Stuck in the back of the court, popped up for the reset. Good job moving forward. Popped up and the ball is put away. No matter what level you play at, if you hit the ball up in the air like that, generally it's going to be put away. And these players are playing at the 4.0 level. Just not a very good attempt at that backhand. Another deep lofted return. And that ball was out of the court, almost made it in. There's a free point for the team in the back court as the player in the near court cannot get the return of serve into the court. Goodbye. She's happy about that shot. Ride that horse. Try to hit it down the line and just missed it out of the court. Oh, is the lob going to work? Allowed them to stay in the point. In the end, they got stuck in the transition zone. There's another free point for the team in the back court. That's the second retard of serve she has hit out of the court. And there's another unforced error. That was a fire fight, and the ball was eventually hit out of the court. Nice drive. That was a good defense there. Oh, got the roll of the tape. Can't quite get to it. So that is the third free point in this game because a player could not return a serve. And to be honest, these serves are not that difficult. You've just got to put out your best effort to make sure that you get a return of serve into the court. It's very unlikely in pickleball a player will hit a winner on a return of serve. So just get your return of serve into the court. It's very simple. Yep, could not reset the ball, just popped it up twice. 
That's almost a reset. Oh, he's got it. It fell over the uh, net and into the court. Very nice shot. Oh, and she sped it up and hit it right between them. They're going to slow it down. Look at this shot with some top spin. That was a foot inside the court. Very, very nice shot. Five to three now. The team in the back court is winning. Now, I'm going to point out just real quickly here, the team in the back court has six points. The team in the near court has given them three free points because that was the third return of serve the players in the near court have missed. If they would not have missed those serves, or those return of serves, I'm sorry, the score would not be six to three. I mean, it might be, but at least the players in the far court would have had to have earned those points. They were given to them instead. A quick timeout to tell you about my online pickleball store, pickleballprintables.com, where you will find the coolest pickleball swag on the planet. T-shirts, coffee mugs, tumblers, totes, caps, and kiss cut stickers. 65 clear, crisp, and clean designs to choose from. Use the coupon code YouTube and get 10% off your first order. Dink in style. Go to www.pickleballprintables.com or click the link in the description below. This point should be over. Yep. Good defense. Oh, hit the net and fell inside the court. Oh, nice try. That's a good place to hit a third shot drop. She just missed it. Yep, so that's what happens when you hit a third shot drive from the back of the court. A lot of times your opponent is just waiting at the non-volley zone for it. Here comes the drive. She's waiting for it and hits it with her backhand. And that did not allow the woman in gray to move forward because it was not a an effective third shot drive. She should not have moved into the court. She should have stayed back to defend. She didn't. She moved forward and she got caught in the transition zone. That's a good return. That's a good shot right there as well. Just hit it into the net. Good play, just missed the backhand. Now they have changed sides as the team in the near court has gotten out to an eight to four lead. Good get. Nice try. Okay, so that lady went and poached that ball from her and hit a very nice third shot into the kitchen. Watch right here. This obviously is the person in the other court's ball, but she came and got it with her forehand. And that was a very good shot. Good shot. Okay, look how good that shot was. Oh, she got it over the net there. But I want you to watch how good of a third shot this is. But I also want you to watch that after hitting it, neither of these players move forward. And this was the perfect opportunity to do so. Watch right here. Look at this shot. Very good. Maybe it bounced a little high and they thought that their opponent could drive this. She just popped it right over, and if she would have been closer, she could have gotten that. But anyway, she got the luck of the tape, and that ball fell into the court. Good serve. Drive. Oh, that one's out of the court. A while ago, she hit that same shot. It fell in the court. This time, it did not. Good play right here. So that's two unforced errors by the team in the far court. And now the score is 12 to four. The team in the near court is just out to a huge lead. This game is to 15. Unfortunately, she missed that third shot drop. Now the other team has an opportunity to come back here. And they do get that point. So five to 12 now. Third shot just missed. I mean, You've got to get your third shot over the net. 
Good return. Trying with the lob here. Oh, that ball was going out of the court. She hit it anyway, and she's able to put that shot away. So it's 12 to 5 now. The team in the near court has control of the ball. They can close the match out right here. They just need three more points. Can they move forward? Can they move forward? Can she move forward? Nope. The lady in the uh, court on the right backed up even more, and that ball is hit out of the court. Let me just go back and show you this. Let me see why she backed up here. And I'm talking about the left-handed player. Look, she's up. Now she's backing up because she thinks she has to defend from way back there. And that's the end of the point. So this team in the far court has had a couple of opportunities to really put this ball away because look where their opponents are. They are at the back of the court. Now they have allowed them to get to the front of the court, and the players in gray end up losing that point. 13-5. to five. Good drop. Did not move up, but did so on the, I think, seventh shot. That's very good. Pop straight up. And I'm not sure if that was in or out. She put that one away. Oh, what a shot. That's their best shot of the day. Watch this forehand with topspin. I mean, this is really good. Okay, so what happened there is the player that was in the ad court switched to the serve court, and she really was not set. Her feet were still moving when this ball was hit. She just didn't get there quick enough. She's trying to run over there and get established. Her feet are still moving. She had to slide over to try to get that. If she would have been established quicker, she probably could have gotten that ball. Got it in. That was a really, really, really good point. Let's take a look at the score. 13-6, the players in the near court are in total control, ball in hand, with the opportunity to win this game. Unforced error in the transition zone was not all the way up to the kitchen line. Same thing here. Look where they are. They're stuck. This point should be over. Players in the far court have the advantage as they are at the front of the court. You can pop this up all day long. The only way they are going to score is if their opponents make an unforced error, and they did it. They actually hit a winner, and look at this. This is the second time the players in the near court have given up a free point to their opponents because they missed the return of serve. There's another unforced error. That was just a good shot with some top spin. She was able to take it out of the air. Yep, put it away as she was backing up. And just like that, the score goes from 5 to 13 to 10 to 13. The team in the backcourt has reeled off five unanswered points. Now, this is a tournament. In a tournament, I believe each team gets two timeouts per game. The team in the near court, who is ahead 13 to 5, is not calling a timeout. I think this would be a perfect time to call a timeout, regroup, try to figure out what's going on, and try to get the win because all they need is two more points. Instead, she gives another free point to her opponents. I think it's even now. I think each team has missed three return of serves. Why did that happen? I think it's worth a look here. Here we go. She just hit it too hard. That's all there is to it. 
Very, very nice return. A punch backhand there. Put it away. Oh, and she makes the... Oh, it went over the net. Okay, so now it's 11-13 too. Sooner or later, players are going to learn not to hit a lob in that situation because that is exactly what can happen. Watch what happens. Everything's going fine. Decides to lob it up, and the ball is put away. And there's a slow motion of it. I mean, that's just a fantastic shot. But she doesn't get that opportunity if her opponent doesn't lob it up. They're switching again. There's the shot. She never made it up to the kitchen. She got stuck in the transition zone, and now look what she does. She switches hands instead of hitting a backhand. She was able to get it over. That ball has popped up, but look where she is now. She's all the way at the back of the court. So she is in a defensive position, and I just don't think this is going to end well. Oh, instead, her partner tries to poach this ball because she probably didn't even know where her partner was on the court, couldn't even see her, pops it straight up. Oh, she could have put that away. She's backing up again. Now she has to run and get this ball. And that's a good shot, but she did move up. Now she did, finally. This is a good point. Oh, and she hit it where the player wasn't. Wow, that's a very good shot, very good court awareness. And just like that, it seems just like minutes ago, the score was 5-13. to 13, And the team in the backcourt has reeled off eight unanswered points to tie it up. They still have control of the ball. They are serving. And I really think the team in the near court should have called a timeout when the score got tied at 13. And that ball was out of the court. I mean, just barely. Oh, she got it in. Nice defense. Stuck her paddle up and it fell in. And there's the unforced error right at, very, right at a very inopportune time. Now the other team can put this game away. Let's see if they can finish it off after being behind 5-13. to 13. All right. Second serve here. Nice deep return. And hit the third shot drive right into the net. I mean, when you get into this situation and the game is so close and you're hitting a third shot, you've got to make sure you get it over the net. Now it's the other team's chance to put it away. Pop straight up. Oh, good defense. Oh, and she smacked it out of the court. I really think the team in the near court thought that point was one because they had a couple of opportunities to put it away. Watch again. The other team does a really good job on defense. There it is. Oh, and she got it. There it is again. Oh, my goodness. That's a good shot. Oh, the problem here, I think, is that one player is right-handed and the other player is left-handed. So both of their forehands are in the middle of the court and they really did not know which player should have hit that shot. 13 to 13, what's gonna happen here? Let it go. Oh, she hit a ball that was going out of the court. Oh, that ball was going out of the court as well. And the team in gray ended up getting that point and taking a 14 to 13 lead. They actually hit two balls that were going out of the court, and the player in the near court hit the out ball both times. Can they finish it off here after being behind 5-13? to 13? That's out of the court, and that is the game. Wow. I was not expecting that.
Nice job by the team in the backcourt to hang on and hang in there and come back and get the win. So there you have it. I strongly feel if you're playing in a tournament and you get out to a huge lead, then all of a sudden your opponents start to make a comeback, I think it's a great idea to call a timeout. That's what timeouts are for. They give you the opportunity to regroup, to re-strategize, and maybe play a little bit differently going forward. The team that was way, way ahead never called a timeout and they allowed their opponents to come back and get the win. So what do you do when you feel the game slipping away? Let me know by leaving a comment in the comment section below. That's it from Pickleball Pick Apart. I really hope you learned something from watching this video. And if you did, I hope you take the time to like it, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell so you'll be notified when I post a new video. And don't forget to check out my online pickleball store, pickleballprintables.com, where you will find the coolest pickleball swag on the planet. This is Rory saying, as always, thanks for watching, and see you on the court.